Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the LEA Special Education Point of Contact monthly webinar for the month of May. We will begin our presentation momentarily. Um, for those of you who have joined us, you will find in the handouts tab a PDF version of our presentation today. We encourage you to download that presentation and share that with your school teams as it has critical information regarding um, the closeout of this school year as well as preparation for our 22-23 school year. And we will be starting momentarily. We see that there are still folks logging in to um, the call this morning. But in the meantime, we encourage you to download that handout and we will be beginning in just a few moments. Okay, good morning, everyone. Again, thank you for joining the LEA Special Education Point of Contact monthly webinar for the month of May. Um, and I am joined with my colleagues here from the K-12 System and Support Team, our Chief Information Officer, and our um, Division of um, Teaching and Learning. Starting with our agenda for today, my name is Tiffany Ingram, Program Analyst here in the um, K-12 Systems Division here at OSSI, and um, I will have a full agenda for today. And again, as you join us, please, please, please download a handout of our presentation today in PDF format so you can share that with your school teams. It, we will be reviewing critical information in regards to closing out the school year, preparing for next school year. Um, we have updates from our policy reminders um, from policy, our policy team. Um, Chrissy will be providing um, reminders and updates. We will be uh, having updates from our monitoring and compliance uh, team as well. You will hear about some SEDS updates, transportation updates, as well as reminders and announcements um, regarding professional development opportunities for you and your staff to participate in as well. I am going to turn it over to Christy to share our policy reminders and updates for this month. Christy? Good morning, everybody. This is Christy Weaver Harris. I'm a policy manager in OSSI's Division of K-12 Systems and Supports in the Office of Special Education. I'm going to be going over some quick reminders about some stuff going on right now, how to um, close out the school year and get ready for the next school year, and then some exciting announcements about policy trainings that we have coming up. Next slide, please. All right, as a reminder, on April 27th, the Early Access to Students with Disabilities data application went live um, with student information for the upcoming 22-23 school year. This is a click application that OSSI provides to give LEAs access to information for pre-enrolled students with disabilities um, after the end of the current school year and prior to when your student information system or your SIS switches over to the upcoming school year, when you kind of have that lapse and being able to see who's coming to you. Um, this data is updated daily, and this is, again, your reminder to make sure that you are deleting data if you are downloading it from the system. Um, if you're unfamiliar with Quick, it's a data vis visualization tool that uh, is used, makes like interactive reports and dashboards with like charts and graphs and all sorts of information. Um, and a user's role in eSchool Plus will determine if you have access to the particular Aussie Click application. Um, early access to students with disabilities is available to a variety of LEA points of contact. If you need to change your role in eSchool Plus to make sure you get access to this, please reach out to your LEA data manager. And again, it is now available on Click. Please let us know if you have any questions or difficulties using it. 
Next slide. Um, I'm going to go over some action items for LEAs to begin closing out the school year. This is the same information that we talked about last month, so I'm going to do this a little quickly. Um, the first item is to be completing reevaluations and annual IEP team meetings that are due over the summer. I know it's been tough um, to get assessments and evaluations completed this year, so consider um, how you can play catch up on that maybe a little bit over the summer and also how you may be able to plan for next year um, and the beginning of next school year. Uh, make sure you are fully documenting activities and SEDs consistent with OSSI's data management policy, which requires you to document updates to a student's file within five business days. So make sure that you are documenting and completing service logs, progress reports, um, and a summary of performance for every student who's graduating with a diploma. So you can skedaddle those kids right off of your SEDs roster. Um, I also want you to, uh, I want to encourage you to consider uh, summer staffing, which again, I want to acknowledge it's not, it's not an easy feat for anybody this year. I know, I know that you guys are facing some really, really serious challenges there, um, but we do want you to ensure that there's somebody around to receive and respond to records requests um, and to support LEA obligations, especially related to early childhood transition. So attending those transition conferences, making sure initial um, evaluations are completed for those kiddos and Asi, uh, Dawn and I will talk in a little while about a process that we are rolling out to help get you uh, better earlier access to those kids' records. Um, I have received a couple of questions about how do we notify Aussie of who our like point of contact is over the summer. Just make sure that you are designated in eSchool Plus as like a SPED point of contact. Um, there's not like a formal role that you need to be identifying for us. Next slide, please. All right, so turning to the upcoming school year, I want to remind you to check out Aussie's start of school information and the trainings that are available over the summer. Um, that website always has a wealth of information and should be launching pretty soon. Um, please make sure that you're submitting TRFs for the upcoming school year to ensure um, that you're doing your part to ensure the timely provision of transportation services for eligible students. Um, I also want to encourage you to conduct an audit of your LEA's SEDS users to make sure the right folks do and do not have access to student records and SEDS. We know that um, that's, that's something that you're probably going to need to work with your LEA data manager on. Um, we want to clear those folks out of systems um, when they are no longer relevant for your purposes. Um, and make sure you're working with your LA data manager to ensure you have a 22-23 school year calendar entered in SEDS and to help support a smooth switchover of your data systems to the upcoming school year. Next slide, please. Uh, just a couple more action items for you to help you prepare for next school year, and these include planning for training and PDs that uh, you need to be holding over the summer. Um, I, in a minute, I'm going to get into some exciting trainings that my team will be offering over the summer, um, and I want to, to I want to encourage you to consider um, when and how you may need to be updating LEA policies and procedures in accordance with the new Chapter 30 regulations. Um, and some of our trainings will help you accomplish that, but I want you to consider taking a look at those over the summer and see how they may need to be changed. Uh, ensure that you're monitoring your student enrollments through early access uh, to make sure that you're ready to serve those kiddos. And make sure that you're, if you have students in your LEA that are under the age of six, make sure that you're preparing to document the first provision of specialized instruction for those students, consistent with um, our requirements in the data reporting that we require in accordance with the DL, the DC lawsuit. Next slide, please. All right, some exciting news for my team. After 10 years, Chapter 30 will finally go effective on July 1, 2022. We anticipate that it will post in the DC Register as a final regulation in about the next two weeks um, with an effective date of July 1, 2022. So it may be published before then, but it will not be effective until July 1. Um, I will be sending an email directly to all LEA heads of school and special education points of contact as soon as that happens, um, as soon as it is actually published. Uh, so make sure again that you're, you're on that email list. Um, and I do that based on your role in eSchool Plus. Uh, so to help LEAs understand and implement Chapter 30, my team is rolling out some really robust trainings. I'm going to give you a quick overview of these um, and then get into more specifics in a second. But I do want to get on your radar that Chapter 30 is happening. We need to be preparing for it. And we are really trying hard to give you trainings and resources that can help your LEA implement Chapter 30. So these are kind of an overview of what we're going to be uh, providing training on this summer. Um, the first set series is understanding the differences of Chapter 30. The second series is around implementing Chapter 30 in your LEA from a practice standpoint. 
We are also uh, hosting trainings uh, to build IEP team capacity to make data-driven eligibility determinations. Uh, we have a training series targeted specifically for paraprofessionals. And then we also will be hosting trainings on physical restraints uh, through the MAMP system. Um, I'll get into that in a second. So next slide, please. So again, these are the overall trainings, and this is a little bit more information on the modules that will be discussed in each of those, of those topics. Um, we do plan to post recorded webinars uh, over the summer and just some additional resources, and then we will be hosting webinar, like live webinar trainings during August and September to support your return to school. So we want to make sure that these materials are available for you to access, but not like post trainings that you could potentially miss out on until everyone returns in August. Um, so keep an eye on the LEA look forward and on your email for announcements about those dates when they're finalized, because I'll make sure that we're, we're communicating that stuff out as, as well as possible. So for understanding chapter 30, we will have uh, the modules within that training will include um, an overview of the changes in chapter 30, a review of the new eligibility criteria, uh, a review of seclusion and restraint requirements, and then the requirements for IEP certificate of completion. I think those are the three biggest areas of change in chapter 30, but we're gonna go over all of the changes too. Um, in our implementing chapter 30 uh, series, uh, we will be going over impacts on enrollment and child find, uh, referral, evaluation, and eligibility, and implications for the IEP team, how chapter 30 impacts the provision of faith, uh, responsibilities for transfer students, and then how you can incorporate Andrew F. in your development of IEPs. So the implementing Chapter 30 training will focus a little bit on both the changes in Chapter 30 and LEA best practices. It will not be strictly related to what is different in Chapter 30. It's a little bit of a broader uh, training for y'all. Next slide, please. So again, we will be hosting trainings to build IEP team capacity to make data-driven eligibility determinations. Um, we're hosting trainings related or specific for paraprofessionals, and then um, we'll be hosting restraint, tra uh, restraint trainings where participants can get certified in the MANT system. Under Chapter 30, the only folks who, who may apply a physical restraint on a child in a District of Columbia LEA is someone who is trained and certified in a formal uh, restraint method. So we are hosting MANT system trainings. Your LEA is not required to use the MANT system. CPI is fine. There's a bunch of other um, options out there that you're, if, you, if your LEA already has existing trainings on it, that's great. But the only folks in your building who can apply a physical restraint on a child as of July 1, 2022, child, student with a disability, is um, they are folks who are formally certified in, trained and certified in physical restraints. Um, so I just want to give you guys a quick overview of, of what to expect in those trainings. We're really excited about it and we really hope that it's helpful. Um, for the first set of trainings, we'll be providing additional materials to help you incorporate that in your trainings. These trainings will be provided by contractors um, under the supervision of my team. So we will not be providing like the, the, the root slide decks for these, but this is really more practice based than um, chapter 30 uh, requirements based. If you have any questions about those, please feel free to drop questions in the question box and I'll take a look or email me directly. Um, and if you have any issues with those trainings over the summer, if you have any uh, trouble accessing the materials or if you need additional materials, please reach out to me because we really want to be helping you guys as best we can and be really flexible and helping you implement these changes in your LEA. Next slide, please. Um, I also want to remind you guys that Aussie has partnered with a DC-based company, um, Opportunity Consulting, to offer LEA's individualized uh, special education support services. So Opportunity Consulting will provide technical assistance to LEAs to support improvements in a wide area of you know, many topics um, in special education programming, instruction, and service delivery. So they really want to help you improve, like, develop, establish, and improve uh, your systems within your school to um, improve your service provision to students. Um, these supports are intended to serve as professional development. OSSI does retain the authority and responsibility to ensure that LEAs are meeting the requirements of IDEA and to enforce those requirements as appropriate. So compliance related questions should continue to be directed to OSSI via your LEA monitor. And if you send compliance related questions to Opportunity Consulting, they'll send them over to us. Um, 
So to request this support, you can contact them through the email address that's here, or you can leave a voicemail and someone will respond to you within 72 hours. And as a reminder, please do not share specific student information via email or voicemail. This is more like a systemic improvement type uh, effort here, um, but please do not be sharing students' PII when you are communicating uh, with those folks. I think that's everything for me. I will again take a look at the questions box, um, but I'm going to turn it over back to Tiffany. Um, thanks so much, Christy. I am, we're now going to start our monitoring and compliance reminders and updates, and I will turn it over to Dawn to share more about Child Outcome Summary. All right, good morning. As mentioned, my name is Dawn Hilton, and I am the 619 Preschool Special Education Coordinator with the Division of Early Learning and the Division of K-12. Today, I would like to remind you of the second data checkpoint for Child Outcome Summaries, COS. To prepare for this checkpoint, LEA should confirm the accuracy of all cost records for children currently enrolled in pre-kindergarten special education programs and children who will exit the programs at the end of the 2021-2022 school year by June 30th. During this checkpoint, OSI will compare the available student information in SEDS to DCCATS. We will confirm that all children enrolled in the pre-K special education program has an active record in DCCATS. We will also confirm that entry data and exit data, when applicable, was submitted um, in all three outcome areas. Cost exit data is extremely important as it is a process used to measure the overall effectiveness of special education programs and services for preschool age children as determined by OSI and the Office of Special Education Programs, OSEP. When gathering exit data, it is important for a team of individuals who um, is familiar with the child to share, review, and discuss data regarding the student's progress in the three outcome areas. The team members you may want to consult with include the classroom teacher, related service providers, the special education teacher, parents, paraprofessionals, and classroom aides. Additionally, please consider the results of classroom assessments, curriculum benchmarks, formal and informal observations, and parent questionnaires. Next slide, please. LEA serving pre-K special education programs are actively receiving and will continue to receive referrals to special education for children who have completed the enrollment process in my school DC during the remaining summer, spring and summer months. As a reminder, public charter LEAs are responsible for accepting all referrals to special education and completing the initial evaluation and IEP processes for pre-K students. DC Strong Start, our district's early intervention program, and DC Public Schools Program Early Stages are the two agencies LEAs will receive referral notifications from for newly enrolled students. These referrals include Part C to B transition referrals, Part C extended option exit transition referrals, and Part B child fine referrals. To gain access to these students and SEDS, LEAs should submit an OSSI support tool ticket. The next few slides will provide additional details about the referral transfer process. But before um, we turn that conversation over um, to my colleague, Christy, I would like to direct your attention to my email address, dawn.hilton1 at dc.gov. Please feel free to contact me if you have questions about anything that I've covered um, regarding costs or the referral process that we will discuss a little further. Next slide, please. All right, Christy, take it away. All right, so we have engaged LEAs 
was in this early childhood working group and through that and also through Dawn's work in this area, we've identified a couple of challenges that early childhood LEAs uh, face and Aussie's doing, we're, we're trying to identify solutions to those challenges. So one thing that uh, really is a barrier for LEAs at implementing and carrying out their obligations under IDEA and district regulations when it comes to students ages three through five is having access to student records. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of background here um, to give you an idea of what really the foundation of the challenges that we're talking about today. Uh, if you attended the early childhood uh, working group class two weeks ago, you've already heard some of this. Um, these are the same slides that we presented then, um, but uh, so charters are responsible for transitioning students who are stage four enrolled for the upcoming school year. The trouble here is that a student doesn't show as being stage four enrolled until the data systems switch over to the next school year. So at stage three, a parent accepts the seat in my, in my school DC and then submits registration forms to the LEA. Stage four is really just when the LEA accepts those forms and puts, your, puts the student in the system and then the system tells OSI that school year. But OSI doesn't actually receive that feed again until the SIS switches over for the upcoming school year. So to address this issue, we're implementing a new process for accessing student records, and this is only for kiddos ages three through five, um, that will rely on stage three enrollment data for my school DC. OSI relies on stage three data for my school DC as a proxy for stage four enrollment and other in multiple other areas. Um, this is like a secure data way of, of doing that. Um, and one of these is raising access to uh, LEAs uh, in the early access to for quick applications. So we use this data in other areas um, and it's a reliable way we believe. Next slide please. So here's an overview of the new process for LEAs who have students ages three through five to get access to their students in SEDS. So first, OSI is creating what we kind of call container schools um, or they're like holding schools for students ages three to five. Um, and you as an LEA will be able to enroll three to five year olds in these container schools for the specific purpose of accessing student records before the SIS switches over. But you also must exit them from the container school. I'll get there in a minute, but I wanna flag for you. Once these kids are in a container school, they also have to get out. Um, so these container schools will be named um, like your LEA dash ECE transition for early childhood education transition. Um, and Aussie will be pushing that into, into data systems, or we already have, I think. Um, so next, the LEA will be notified that a child is transitioning into your LEA. And as Dawn said, this will be through a transition conference invitation being sent to you by Strong Start, or because DCPS reaches out to you directly to say that they have confirmed that a student is enrolling in your charter school. And DCPS Early Stages has their own process for confirming that before they reach out. Um, Dawn is also going to be involved in these transitions between early stages and charter schools. Um, so she's able to confirm student enrollments and she can help support and facilitate those handoffs too. Um, when you are notified that a child is coming to you, you need to submit an OST ticket requesting administrative uh, enrollment of a student SEDS. So in that OST ticket, you need to include um, the child's first name, last name, and date of birth. The student won't have a USI yet. Aussie will review your ticket and confirm that the student is stage three enrolled in your LEA and will create a record for the student says and then give, your, give, you, give you access to that. When you submit your OST ticket, you also need to identify the issue type as CDB transition and the status subcategory as access to the student sets. And that will tell our folks who receive OST tickets to send that over to Dawn for her to confirm enrollment so that we can get this moving. Um, there may be delays if you identify a different issue type or a different sub status subcategory, your OST ticket may be denied. Like there's, so make sure that you're following those specific uh, formatting of your OST ticket to make sure it gets to the right place and we can do this as quickly as possible for you. I want to acknowledge that there's going to be some level of de delay between some points in this process just because it takes Aussie a little bit to get these things in place. We are committed to moving those things along quickly. Dawn is very committed to getting uh, these things done quickly, but um, make sure that you're helping us help you. Um, when you receive access and SEDS, you need to be uh, documenting and carrying out your obligations for that student. So that includes documenting the referral, which was receipt of the transition conference invitation or notification of the referral, and then completing the eligibility process. Um, and again, there may be a few days between your OST ticket and when you actually get access to that student, 
Dawn's gonna speak in a second about what you can be doing in the meantime, but we all know that it's a tight initial evaluation timeline. We wanna be supporting you as best as we can. Um, when your CIS switches over to the next school year, the LEA must ensure students are appropriately enrolled in their actual school location. So that's what I mean by get them out of the container schools. If the student doesn't stage five enroll with your LEA, exit them in accordance with the entry and exit guidance. Um, OSSI will be monitoring this part of the process too. We'll be checking your container schools to make sure the students are getting moved out into their actual school locations. Um, and we'll be providing technical assistance um, to help you get those kids where they need to go or exited from your system. Um, because we don't wanna have those students hanging out in the container schools for any longer than necessary, especially ahead of enrollment audit and child count on October 5th. Um, so we'll be, not, we'll be closely monitoring that and providing technical assistance and reaching out to you when we see those students hanging out in, those, uh, in the container schools. Next slide, please. All right, Dawn's gonna go over a little bit about what you guys can be doing during, um, while you're waiting for SEDS access. And I'm gonna take a look at the questions box while she does that. So please, if you have any questions about this process, you know it's new and a little different, please go ahead and throw some questions in the questions box. We're happy to answer them. All right, thank you. Um, while you're waiting to um, gain access to students and SEDS, um, I want to ask you to begin your reasonable efforts to obtain parental consent for the initial evaluation. Don, I think you might be on mute or we lost you. Yeah, we may, Dawn may have lost her um, her sound access, um, but- right, I can jump in here. Yeah. Um, so again, so while awaiting access to students record in SEDS, uh, Dawn has identified a few steps to move the referral forward. You should begin the steps of reasonable efforts immediately. And reasonable efforts, as you know, is our three documented attempts using at least two modalities on at least three different dates. Um, and as a reminder, the first contact must be made within the first 10 days of receipt of the referral for special education. Um, and the you have to complete your reasonable efforts um, within 30 days of receipt of the referral to special education. Um, you are not necessarily required to um, to obtain parental consent within 30 days, but you need to be completing your reasonable efforts within 30 days. Um, and since this referral is often a parent's first experience with your LEA and the special education process, we recommend that you contact the parent to share information about your LEA and pre-K programs, as well as information about the initial evaluation and IEP processes, um, evaluations and assessments, the role of the parent, and to schedule meetings. Um, during your conversation with those parents, it's also beneficial to ask them questions about their child. Get that early parent input um, to help inform your initial evaluation um, and, to, and to discuss directly with them any concerns that they may have about their child and the school's programming. Um, LEAs should be able, should review any available documentation that's provided by the refer or um, by the parents. Um, so make sure that you're collecting that existing data to help inform your review of existing data and help inform the initial evaluation process. And lastly, um, we start identifying the evaluation team and scheduled assessment. Um, again, we know that it is tough. It's really tough getting evaluations done. My team will be issuing some guidance around evaluation flexibilities uh, in the next couple of weeks. Um, but I know that it, it's tough. So start planning ahead for those things. And especially for these kiddos, um, three to five, under federal law, we have a really tight timeline that we do not have flexibility with. Um, so make sure that you're planning ahead for those and reacting and acting on those um, on those referrals. Uh, I did see a couple of questions in the questions box that I can address at the end of the webinar. Um, but but again, please continue to throw your questions in there. I think this is the last slide on this. Next slide. Yes, this is the last slide on this. Okay, great. We're going to do a <clears throat> transition into monitoring and compliance, and we're going to um, talk about our upcoming monitoring activities. And I'll turn it over to Karen. 
Thank you, Tiffany, and thank you, Christy and Dawn, for that very important information related to early childhood special education. My name is Karen Morgan Donaldson um, with IDEA Monitoring and Compliance. Um, we've all seen this slide. Um, I just want to highlight some changes or additions. Um, in the month of July, we will be monitoring um, for initial evaluation timeliness. Um, for all of our students from three to 22 with a focus on students for three to five as part of the DL work. Um, also in August, we will be monitoring for C to B transition timeliness. And then just giving you a heads up, in the fall, we will be issuing our annual IDEA determinations that all LEAs receive. Um, and we will also be sending out um, equity requirements under IDEA which includes our significant disproportionality, significant discrepancy, and disproportionate representation monitoring. Just wanted to give you a heads up as you plan for the summer and next fall. Okay, next slide. Okay, so again, we've seen this slide before, um, and it provides an overview of the timeline for correction of noncompliance. I'm showing this slide again just to highlight the 30-day correction window, as there are currently two reports that are in the 30-day correction window. Um, and again, just a quick note, 30-day correction window provides you an opportunity to submit evidence of clarification or correction. Um, so at the end of the 30 days, um, OSSI monitors review any evidence that your LEA upload, uploads into DC CATS. So if there is evidence that demonstrates your LEA was actually compliant and not co non-compliant, then a finding will, be, will not be issued. Otherwise, a finding will be issued. So we call these preliminary and then preliminary findings and then final findings or just findings. Um, when findings are issued through the final report, this begins the 365 day timeline. Once findings are issued, LEAs have 90 days to complete prong one in DC CATS. Once prong two report, once prong one is completed, a prong two report is populated in DC CATS. LEAs have 30 days to engage in that prong two process. Um, so just a quick note, the 365 day timeline includes the completion of prong one and prong two. So if we can move on to our next slide, I am going to just give you an update onto the current reports that are open. Um, we have two reports that are currently in the 30 day correction window secondary transition and reevaluation time, reevaluation timeliness. So the 30 day correction window for secondary transition report actually closes tomorrow, May 19th, and the reevaluation report closes on May 28th. So roughly four days after the 30 day correction win window ends is when OSSI will release the final report. Again, the final report is what begins the 30, 365 day timeline. So again, just as a quick reminder, LEAs are expected to complete prong one within 90 days after that date. So stay tuned for a notification from DC CATS and your IDEA monitor as to the exact date of release. If you have any questions about the prong one or prong two process, please reach out to your OSSI IDEA monitor. Next slide. Okay, another just quick reminder that the 30-day correction window is the only time when you can actually appeal a preliminary finding. So if, if OSSI issued a preliminary finding incorrectly, the 30-day correction window is the only time that you can appeal this. So please log into your DC CATS account and take a look at your open reports. If you have any questions on how to access DC CATS, or how to navigate the system, please reach out to your IDEA monitor. Okay, and our last slide. Um, we have some exciting news related to an additional professional development available to you and all LEAs in the area of special education, specifically IDEA legislation. OSSI has partnered with LRP Publications um, to bring direct step, step e-courses to your LEA. Um, so these e-courses will provide high quality training experiences where you and your staff can do a few things. You can take courses to increase your understanding of fundamental special education policy and compliance. You can also learn at your own pace and engage in learning through quizzes and activities. 
It actually um, measures mastery of the material, and you can also earn professional learning units. So this is a self-paced module system that we are going to be rolling out this summer. These training modules will really help your LEA build special education capacity with all of your staff from paraprofessionals to leaders. Um, and again, beginning at a fundamental level. So these courses will launch this summer. So please stay tuned for additional information on the rollout of this opportunity. We will be um, rolling out information on, on how you can access these, these modules through the LEA Look Forward, as well as email notifications. If you have any additional um, questions, please reach out to me, Karen Morgan Donaldson. Um, again, this is gonna be rolled out this summer, and we really would like for you to um, have this information as you plan your professional development days this summer and this fall. Um, thank you very much. If you have any questions right now, feel free to put it in the question box. Thanks. Thanks so much, Karen. I also wanna highlight for um, our attendees this morning to really download the handout um, of this presentation. Um, there's often a lot of questions about prong one, prong two. We have a robust appendix where we do have slides that helps outline for folks what that process looks like. And it is um, a, a document that you will be able to kind of hold on to and understand that process as well. Um, so I, we encourage you to download the handout of the presentation today. Um, so you will have that information to share out with your staff. Um, I am going to transition to uh, says reminders and updates and hand it over to Rita. Thank you so much, Tiffany, and good morning, everyone. I am Rita Larkins on behalf of the Division of CIO at ASI that manages and supports SED's Easy IEP. Uh, next slide. So just in supplement to some of the things that Christy mentioned about the end of the year SED's requirements uh, and completing that necessary documentation, I'm going to just talk briefly about administrative exits uh, and then also completing your user audit. As a reminder, you should not be deactivating any of the accounts that have a uh, state. So any of the state level support accounts, you should not delete those from your system. But what you can do is go ahead and delete users that have already left your LEA. Or if they're leaving at the end of uh, the school year, go ahead and remove um, those users before we roll over to that next school year. Another question that I got in um, in the chat about putting your calendars in the SEDS, you want to enter information in the SEDS for the next school year uh, in preparation for that, you can go ahead and do that. It doesn't become active until we actually roll over into that next school year. Next slide. So just a little bit about administrative exits. So you may need to take some actions to remove students that are lingering or have remained on your SEDS roster. Uh, and that's even after the student has left the LEA. So just a couple of things you wanna look out for and just some resolution for that. You wanna make sure that students have been properly exited from the SIS that can impact students remaining on your SEDS roster. So you will work with your registrar uh, and also consult the OSSI's entry exit guidance. Um, to resolve those issues. For students that have graduated, you wanna make sure that SOP uh, in that graduation document is in SEDS. Um, and so we have something in the appendix um, about completing the SOP and some instructions. And also students that have aged out uh, and completing the age out process. So if you have not done that, you may still have students that are still on your schools or your LEA SEDS roster um, but have aged out. So we'll need to do an administrative exit in order to remove those students. Next slide, Tiffany. All right, so the summary of performance section is within uh, graduation planning of the IEP process. And so um, you want to um, complete the summary of performance block no later than 60 days before graduation. We're probably in that time frame. Um, failure to complete this section uh, would probably result in your student remaining active in SEDS after graduation. So within the IEP process, when you go into the post-secondary transition plan, you want to create that summary of performance. 
and complete that, make sure that is in the system. Next slide. For your aged out students, you can complete the form, the age out form that's in said. So um, that is for students that'll be 22 at the end uh, of the semester, at the end of the semester that they're turning 22, um, you can complete this age out form. So you'll need to make sure that it's completed and in SEDS uh, before you request an administrative exit. Next slide. And then finally, a little bit about the SEDS 2.0 LEA engagement. Um, first, want to thank everyone that participated in our April session. Uh, we gathered a lot of uh, really good information going into our new SEDS 2.0. We want to remind you that we are having another LEA engagement session tomorrow, uh, May 19th from 1 to 2.30. Please be sure to register for that session so we know how many people will be attending. And we really look forward to your input and insight uh, as we're planning to roll out um, the new SEDS 2.0. That's it for me. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thanks so much, Rita. And now we're going to transfer it over to Doug and Wesley to give us our transportation updates. Doug? Good morning, everyone. I uh, hope all is well. Um, you could go to the, the next slide for me, please, Tiffany. All right, we are gearing up for ESY 2022-23 school year preparation, and this is our um, fun time of the year. So when we're going through this process, we want to ensure that, uh, your calendars are correct, make sure the bell times are good, the exception days, half days, holidays are in the system. Also, cohorts, because you may have a couple of students that may um, have a different bail schedule than the uh, than certain students. So we want to have that information as well. And we all we definitely want to make sure that we're communicating with the parents to so that we can get this uh, accurate student information. Um, even though students may uh, be picked up at one address during the school term, some things may change for ESY where they may stay with a grandmother or some or another relative. We want to make sure we have the correct information and just not assume that um, the student will be picked up where they were um, picked up or transported throughout the school year. And if your student is at a um, non-public, you want to make sure that the non-public uh, submitted the calendar in the system as, as well, so you can submit the um, transportation request for the student uh, for ESY. If we have any bad data in the system, um, if it's inaccurate uh, or any late data uh, submissions, it will uh, definitely increase uh, route issues and also the timeliness of when the student uh, will receive transportation. Um, the later you, you, you submit this information is the later that the student uh, will delay uh, student transportation for that particular school term. Next slide, please. Um, this is the overview of the slide where, uh, well, who's responsible uh, throughout the process. So the data submission process, um, that's more so the LEA's responsibility to make sure that everything is correct, submitting student transportation requests. And of course, if you have any um, issues with transportation uh, submissions, just please contact the TOE support line at 202-576-5520, and we will be able uh, to assist you with any issues that you have. And after you um, submit a transportation request form or create a calendar, our outreach team will contact you um, as well. Just to, we'll contact the parent to ensure that the data, that the information that you submitted for the transportation request, request is correct. Um, and also to verify if they're, they're gonna utilize transportation. Because sometimes we see that things change between when you spoke to the uh, parent, meaning you mean the coordinators at the school uh, communicated to the parent to see if they're gonna uh, utilize transportation for ESY or the next school term. And uh, once our outreach team contacts them, we will, if they decide that they're going to utilize or not, um, if they're not going to utilize it, our team will uh, terminate the transportation request and put notes in the system that states per parent that the uh, the student will not utilize transportation. Um, <clears throat> so that happens during the verification process, um, which is on DOT side of things. If we find any kind of discrepancies, um, our team will, uh, We'll make sure we update those discrepancies while we're going 
through the uh, verification process with the school. Even though we know um, the certification deadline for ESY has passed, we want to make sure that you're still submitting these transportation request forms for your students that are eligible for ESY. And we are now moving up on um, the, the ESY, I'm sorry, the certification deadline for SY 2223. So please push, push, push to get these calendars and transportation requests submitted. And remember, um, data should be submitted no less than 20 business days um, before uh, before uh, your, your school start date. Next slide, please. All right, new students to your LEA. Um, this was mentioned earlier um, throughout the uh, presentation. So um, sometimes you have to be a little patient uh, when things aren't seen yet within your uh, SEDS or uh, within TOTE because a student may be, you know, enrolling into your school. You may not see them as of yet. Just make sure you be patient. If anything that you don't see, reach out to your uh, your data manager to make sure that they um, did what they supposed to do in order to have those students available and within your system. Um, if there is an issue at the beginning of the school year, we do offer um, reimbursement to LEAs for transportation for students that um, are not showing up their system and is not a fault of your own um, if you're not able to submit a transportation request in a timely manner. So uh, we do have the reimbursement um, link with embedded into the slide. So if you need information on that, um, please uh, um, you utilize that link. Next slide, please. All right, and if there are any issues where you need, uh, one of your students may uh, need to pause transportation services, please reach out immediately. And uh, we do uh, require a minimum of five business days notice to resume transportation services. And uh, we don't want to terminate that student um, transportation due to non-riding. So um, it's important that you contact our parent resource center at 202-576-5000 to, uh, so we can make the correct service adjustments for those students. So as soon as you uh, talk to a parent or you figure out um, that a student may um, need a, um, a pause on their transportation, please reach out to us immediately so we can ensure that uh, we uh, send those instructions to our terminal staff um, and the uh, how long the temporary pause will be for. Next slide, please. All right, we have uh, training dates throughout the summer. I know a lot of you all may um, be on vacation, but if you want to take a day to come um, hang out with us and train and learn about TOTE, please do so. We have a training going on right now. Um, my teammate, Brian Gober, he's uh, in there with, uh, with coordinators at the moment. So um, please uh, make sure that you utilize these training dates throughout the summer. We'll have a couple of more added on outside of June as well. We normally take a little break uh, because uh, we're preparing for um, the start of school, which is a heavy time for us. So, it, um, so we'll probably take a break around on the beginning of August because we have a lot of schools starting um, at the start of uh, August. So please utilize these training dates. And of course, if you need any um, questions or any um, assistance in between those dates, if you have any new coordinators, just reach out to us and we can set up a one-on-one -on -one session outside of that. Um, you can call us at 202-576-5520 or email us at dot at dc.gov. Again, thank you and um, have a great rest of your week. Thanks so much, Doug. I'm gonna turn it over to Jen and she's gonna provide us some reminders um, and announcements from our teaching and learning team. Hi everybody, Jen Carpenter here from Teaching and Learning. Next slide, please. I just want to share with you, uh, save the dates for the summer offering of the Foundation to Special Ed Education series. Um, the series courses one through four will be offered this summer. Uh, courses one and two, which will focus on introduction to special education and IEP team and processes, um, will open on July 11th. The content is self-paced and will be offered in, um, in Aussie's new learning management system, and you'll learn more about that um, in future communications from Tao. If you have questions, you can contact my colleague, Stephen Hamblin, at the email on the bottom of the slide. Next slide, please. 
Um, and then uh, August 1st, the next two courses will be launched using data to develop student supports and evidence-based instructional methods. So those first two courses will really be focused on building upon um, the policy and compliance information that was mentioned earlier by the K-12 team that's um, that is available to you through SPED Connect. Um, and then this, these next two courses are focused uh, very much on implementation um, and instructional implications of all the things that you've learned about developing strong IEPs as part of an IEP team. So we hope that you'll engage in the entire series. Um, again, it's July 11th that the first two courses open and August 1st, the second two will open. You will receive communication via the LEA Look Forward and the TAL Bulletin on how you can access these courses through our learning management system once it is ready to launch. Next, yep. And you can find those updates here in the bulletin. You can subscribe to the bulletin and you can always go and check out um, past issues of the TAL PD Bulletin using the link on the right. Thanks so much, Jen. Thank you. Um, we do want to call attention to um, additional professional development opportunities from the Division of Early Learning. Um, we have listed the website to connect, and if you have any issues creating the account, um, accessing that professional development information system through the Division of Early Learning, um, there is a link here and contact information for the help desk. As we wrap up our webinar, we just want to close out wrapping everything in a great bow of kind of what's required um, for your next steps, um, making sure you're identifying that summer SPED PLC for your LEA, logging into that early access app, um, completing the closeout activities um, for a 21-22 school year, um, and as we go into the summer and ESY starts, ensuring that you are completing ESY progress reporting for students. We are encouraging you to um, please complete our webinar survey. Um, the link is in the chat. We definitely, definitely encourage you to also engage in our many summer training opportunities. Please be on the lookout for information on how to access that. Share that with your teams. And um, so we can expand our knowledge of special education during the summer. Of course, if you have missed any of our webinars this entire school year, we have a web page, our LEA Special Education Points of Contact monthly series page where you can go back and watch our previous webinars and download all of our PowerPoint presentations, those resources and materials that were mentioned. And of course, uh, the recording of this webinar and slides will be posted to the web page uh, within one week of today. We want to thank you so much for joining us this school year. This is our very last monthly SPED POC webinar for the 21-22 school year. Um, we thank you for joining us each and every month, providing us with thoughtful feedback and questions on how the OSSI team can improve here and how we can support your practice at your schools. Um, we wish you an amazing summer. And Again, please complete our survey of um, just giving us feedback on this entire webinar series for this school year. We really want to use this data to improve and inform our practices as we move into start of school year, um, planning for summer, um, and moving into building out our SPED webinar series and how this will look for the 22-23 school year. Um, so we really, really encourage everyone to complete our survey for today. I will leave this link up here. Um, please complete it. I also have it in the chat. And um, Christy, I'll take this opportunity to see in our last few moments if there are any questions that maybe we need to address for the group today. There's a couple of questions I'm going to go over. Um, if anyone needs the registration link for tomorrow's LEA SEDS uh, engagement session, please let me know. Rita has it available. Um, somebody asked, how early can you create your school year, your school year 22-23 calendar in SEDS? And you can create that now. The dates are not going to become active until the school year changes, but you can complete the calendar at your earliest convenience. And your annual calendars should also be um, submitted in eSchool Plus. Um, somebody asked, or just wanted to flag for us, I just want to acknowledge um, this too, that uh, it, 
it really is a tight timeline for y'all when you are getting those transition students in um, and that you need access to the information um, to be able to plan and take action. We are we, can, we are in complete agreement about that. We absolutely sympathize that, that y'all are under a really tight timeline. We are working very closely with CIO to ensure quick action on our end when you submit those OST tickets for access to students' records. Um, when you submit an OST ticket requesting records uh, request, requesting access instead to a student records, to a student record, you will know that you get that access because you will receive a notification when the OST ticket is like acted upon and closed. So keep an eye on those OST tickets when you're submitting them. Um, someone asked like who else at the school level is going to be trained on this enrollment process for students into the container schools. I encourage you to share this information within your LEA. Um, the Usually it's your registrar who's registering those kids in, but it's usually the special education point of contact who is the first person that becomes aware that a student is transitioning in because you are the one who receives the notification from Strong Start or the email from early stages saying, hey, we know this kid is coming to you. So we wanted to make sure that this information was communicated to y'all as the usually is the first point of contact. It's also being communicated to um, LEA data managers, but I strongly encourage you to, sh to share this process with your registrars, with the folks who are pulling those kids into the container schools. Um, someone also asked if you see a student um, in early access to students with disabilities in the click application, if you should be like proactively requesting access to that student's records, I would encourage you to wait until you are notified by early stages or by strong start to access those, to, to request access to those students' records. But if you do see a student in click that looks like it's coming to your LEA and who has started the process at early stages, you can reach out to early stages directly to say, hey, we see this kid coming let's get this transition going like what's the student status and let's get them transitioned over to me um and oh somebody asked about um medical exemptions for next year although this is a non-special education topic i just want to acknowledge that like aussie will be releasing information on um processes and requirements for next school year as they become available keep an eye on the lea look forward um, for more information there um, and yes, somebody asked for the link to the SEDS feedback session. I will send that to everyone if I can. Or Rita, when you send it, can you just send it all? I think those are all the questions, but I'm going to hold you all so that you can please complete the survey. That's really important data for us. Um, we, we really rely on that in, in forming and in planning for our, uh, for our webinars for next year and over the summer. And thank you so much, Christy. Again, um, Rita now has placed in the chat um, how to register for that LEA engagement session that will be taking place tomorrow afternoon. Um, so we encourage um, you to participate and um, be involved in our process as we plan out SEDS 2.0. We encourage your participation. Um, again, please also visit our, our um, survey link to provide your feedback. And um, as we close out today's webinar session, again, please download a copy of this presentation in the handouts tab so you are able to take this um, information with you and share it with your school teams, your LEA data managers. So we are ensuring information is getting across your LEA um, to the persons who are the main POCs for you all in those many different divisions. Um, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We have, wish you a great rest of the week and um, a great summer. So you will be hearing for us during the summer uh, for a start of training for particularly any new points of contact that may be coming to your LEA. And then we will also start up our webinar series in August. So um, have a wonderful rest of the week and a great summer. <laughs>